Hi, I'm Annie Botticelli, and this is the Storyteller Forecast for Capricorn for January 2017. Go to my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com, see what's new on my blog, check out my Astrology Apprenticeship Program, and my Creating Successful Online Business course, if you're interested in any of those professional certification courses. So what's going on in the month of January for Capricorn? Happy New Year, although we are starting here in the midst of a retrograde, and so maybe it might not feel completely new in some ways but it is still a new year and, um, and it's your time. You know, you've got planets moving into Capricorn um, and the rest of you who didn't have birthdays in December are having your birthdays now. And if you're watching for your rising sign, the sun moving over your ascendant has a similar feel um, and energies that go along with them, with it, that it is if, you know, if it were your birthday. So we're all, all of the Capricorn placements are rejoicing when the sun gets into Capricorn. And I have my moon in Capricorn and my Venus in Capricorn, so I always feel um, a push at this time of year as well, because whenever the sun crosses over planets we have in any sign, it enlivens them, you know, it brings life into them. So if you have not, if your birthday is coming and you haven't watched my making your wishes come true using astrological power periods, then I think you really want to do that because I get into lot, a lot more details about using the power of birthday wishes, why birthday wishes are powerful, how you can word them, how you can work with them to make your wishes come true. And do be consistent with your birthday wishes because um, occasionally I'll have someone write that they made birthday wishes and some of them were all of them didn't come true and then they want to say it's because astrology isn't right and it's just not true. You know, you have to take responsibility and take accountability for your own experience, the quality of your own experience, the things that are going on. And that's the path of empowerment. So we cannot bring into our lives through a wish or otherwise that which is not a match energetically for us. That's a holographic law. So if you want to create the things that you want in your life, you have to become an energetic match for them. And sometimes it takes more than a week or a day or a month or whatever to get for the universe to work with you to restructure yourself so that you're an energetic match for the things you wish for. So you could do um, have a notebook for all of your wishing. Um, when I say all of your wishing, because there's different points of, of the year that I outline in that um, Making Wishes Come True video. And you can see what I mean about this. Some of them will come, come true right away. Some of them might not right away, but if you keep wishing during these astrological power periods, then you're re reaffirming to the universe and to yourself, your subconscious mind, which is probably the same thing, right? that this is what you want and things will continue to restructure in such a way that those wishes will come true. So the theme for the energy of Capricorn this month, I'm calling radiating light. And this is, um, you know, when all the planets, especially the sun, start bringing this energy, um, this Capricorn energy more into focus, it's very much about trying to radiate Capricornian things. And Capricorn rules the 10th house, which is the house of work, career, and life purpose. So this theme of bringing all the light that you can possibly muster into your perfect life's work and your perfect way of walking in the world is very, very current. Um, I'm starting to use um, the affirmations that I'm creating uh, on my Instagram account so that you can get pretty versions of what I'm about to tell you. But Here's an affirmation that I wrote for you for this month. I bring all the light I can muster into my perfect life's work. And you can sub in, you know, whatever else you want to bring all the light you can muster. But that's what it's about. You know, it's about bringing the light. And here we are at a time, at least in, um, in the part of the world where I live in, you know, where we don't have a lot of light. I know it's opposite there, down under. But um, this energy of bringing the light into this darkness, into the dark places, is very relevant for Capricorn energy. So when we have birthdays, when we have the sun move over the ascendant, it's about rebirth. It's about delving deep into self-esteem, seeing where we don't feel worthy, seeing where we do feel worthy, strengthening confidence, finding the weak spots so that we can strengthen them, so that we can push forward into all aspects of the world. There is also a strong focus, um, and this is for early, middle, and late degree placements um, of 
energy moving through the second house. The second house has to do with finances and money and the value of things. Um, subjective value is a constant process. You know, how we value something can be totally different than someone else in our family, someone else in our neighborhood values something. One person can value a manicured lawn um, while another person can value not using chemicals and having pollinators in their yard, you know? So the value system, what we, what is important to us is something that is really looked at very strongly when the second house is busy. And your second house is busy. The second house has not only short-term transits moving through, so like things breathing life in the short term, but also long-term transits. Um, the south, transiting south node, Neptune, are there. And that's for early, middle, and Neptune and Chiron are there for late, you know? So there's this ongoing theme where it's like, it's egging you on to keep reevaluating what it is that is important to you. For some people, they can just see money come in at this point because it's your house of earned income. And maybe it's not any more complicated than that, you know? Maybe it's just strong focus on your money, you work hard, more money comes in, boom, that's easy. Nothing else is going on, right? But these outer planets, they tell this story of a deeper thing that's happening where maybe you're starting to deviate from your tribe of origin, from your family, from the people you hang out with. I remember at some point close to my Saturn return, I woke up and looked at my life, although I had created a lot of really cool things at that point. Um, I was totally in a world that just was totally foreign to me. And I had been doing it because that was all I had never, kn I had never known. But um, my values were really very different. And there, at that point, there was this stark uh, movement into a different direction. So you might find that this is brewing. And since we're standing before all this retrograde energy, January is not necessarily the best time to make this huge decision because you're going to have everything you decide be questioned and re-questioned and re-evaluated over the months to come through May. But it's definitely a time to start asking um, consciously, actively asking the bigger questions about how you're walking in the world, about your finances and your values, etc. So these are some things that are specific for Capricorn placements. Now I want to talk about more about this abyss that we're about to dive deep into, what is really good to do, understanding the nature of the retrogrades more. Um, also some good dates in January, challenging dates in January, and some other pieces if you have to slip in a launch. So I'm calling the month of January 2017. The theme for all signs is the edge of the abyss. We start out the month in the middle of the first of a series of personal planets being retrograde. Personal planets are the ones that are closest to us. So really the ones that are relevant here are Mercury, Venus, and Mars. Whenever one of those planets appears as if it's going backwards in the sky, of course they never really do go backwards in their orbit, but from our position on the Earth, if you were watching it in the sky, it would look like it was going backwards. That period of time called a retrograde lends itself into going backwards and going in deep. Some people have made the mistake of thinking you can't do anything during a retrograde cycle. That is totally not true, and I'm going to go into more details about that. But basically, this, this energy of being on the edge of the abyss in this Mercury retrograde that is um, welcoming us as we start this new year, then on January 8th, Mercury goes direct, and then at the end of January, the shadow period for Venus retrograde starts. Venus rules love and beauty and money. So the energies ruling, or the, the, the energies regarding those topics all tend to go backwards. But there's also a shadow period before the actual retrograde. So even though Venus is not retrograde until March 4th, and that's through April 15th, at the end of January, it's already warming up. You know, it's kind of like when you're on your way somewhere, maybe you're at a place not in the forest, okay, and you're driving and there are no trees around, then all of a sudden you start seeing a couple of trees here and there. And you know that when you go deeper, you're going to be covered with trees on both sides of the road, you know, but it's kind of like the trees are starting to co show up and you're getting that vibe of going into the woods. And that's, that's what the retrograde is like. And that's what the shadow periods are like. So 
just as Mercury starts to be clear of its shadow period, Venus's shadow period starts. Um, and then we get into full-on Venus retrograde. And then just as uh, Venus goes direct in the middle of April, we start the shadow period for the next Mercury retrograde. And then it's not till May 19th that Venus is completely clear of its retrograde cycle. And it's not till May 21st that Mercury is completely clear of its retrograde cycle. So you can see why I call this time in January the edge of the abyss and why if you've listened to my horoscopes for a while, you can see why I was pushing you to push as many things forward into the world in the launch period, um, November through like December 3rd or so, because these energies want to go back and they want to go in. Something that, an analogy that I've been thinking of that really reminds me of the energy of what we're standing before. As I was stating earlier, it's a huge mistake to think you can't do anything in a retrograde. There is so much to do, there's plenty to do, and there are some things that it's actually good to do those things. You can get some specifics on Mercury Retrograde by watching my video for that uh, transit. You can also watch my video for Venus Retrograde to get more details about specifics for that transit. I'll give some general retrograde energies here. Um, but it's like if you want to clean out your kitchen, right? Maybe it's not too messy when you get in there. But when you start taking stuff out of the cabinets and spreading all the clean surfaces with the stuff from the cabinets in order to get everything out, throw stuff away, wipe the surfaces inside the cabinets, you create a righteous mess, right? In order to meet the objective, which is to have a truly clean kitchen that feels really good, getting rid of stagnant energy, clearing out things you don't need, making room for new. So although we're not starting this new year in an energy with a lot of new newness coming in, we definitely have a major opportunity to go in deep and clear those things out. So I know for myself, I'm going to be very busy during these retrograde cycles and I'm going to take everything in my house and all of my things out and clear them out. And by the time the energies go direct, I won't have complained because I didn't have any shortage of things to do during this retrograde cycle. It's just the new things, the launches. Um, if there's something you've been doing all along, like for instance, I teach uh, creating successful online business course and I teach an astrology apprenticeship program. I've been teaching these for a while. So you'll see my launches come out in the midst of these retrograde energies, but they're not new and they're short-term programs. That's another thing to know about these new, you know, the warnings to not do new things during the retrogrades. That's really a warning to not do long-term things. If you want to try something on or do a trial period or do something for a short amount of time that's not intended to have longevity, it's perfect. It's fine. You know, you can you can play, you can experiment, etc. And it's a wonderful time to do that. You know, you can um, have different experiences and it's like a no commitment type of thing. If you go in thinking I'm going to be doing this for a certain number of years and it's going to be exactly how we're talking about right now, it's just not going to be that way. You know, it's going to change and evolve and that's the nature of the retrogrades. So, um, just keep that key note of being on the edge of the abyss, keeping the um, understandings that things might have to get a little messier in your life before they can become clearer, but that this is really what's needed. You know, it's really what's needed to get you closer to the things that you want to do, the experiences that you want to have. So another good point about this retrograde cycle is to try to get your taxes done early. Um, if you can submit them, like at the end of, I know you have to wait for some tax documents at the end of January, but as soon into February as possible, have all your ducks in a row, it's going to be much easier for you because April 15th is the tax day that everything is due, but that's the end of Venus retrograde and money things are going to be, you know, affected by this. So you might want to try to get that done. Something else really great about retrogrades is that when you are taking everything out to look at it again, you often find a lot of gems, things that you totally forgot about. Um, if you're a writer, maybe if you're clearing out old files, you find some things that could be usable for a current project or that you feel inspired to go back and start getting into again. This happens all the time. Either something that you find or something comes back to you through someone else mentioning it or um, you know something floats in your field in some way from the past, then you get back on it and you bring it 
to a different level. You know, it's like something coming back from the past that you work on. But you often will find a lot of gems, you know, so contacting people from the past, going through things from the past, clearing out stuff is one of the best things you can do during retrogrades. And then you'll be in a much better position for launching when the stars are great again, which is like May 21st is really, you know, there might be a couple of dates before then that could work, but that's the day that every, the Venus retrograde, the Mercury retrograde is clear. So you've got from May 21st through July 25th, free of personal planet retrogrades. Um, and as we get closer to those days, I'll give you, you know, challenging dates and um, good dates around um, in that time period. But I just want to give you an overview for the year so you have a snapshot of what we're looking at. Then we have another retrograde cycle between um, July 26th and October 6th. And then we're clear again from October 7th through November 5th. So essentially you've got two good launching periods this year. Um, and then you might want to take advantage of that and line, you know, line things up that way. So, um, let's see, I want to give you the good dates. I say good dates. These are dates that have sweet aspects that are occurring and note that some of the dates I give you that could carry sweetness are also some of the same dates that could bring challenges or drama because on some days we have certain really good aspects and certain challenging aspects at the same time. I'm going to give you the dates, but notice, I mean, note that sometimes we feel the energy of a transit before or after the day it actually occurs. So sometimes the exact date isn't as relevant as the time period. I'm not going to list all of why these dates carry sweetness or challenges. You can see more details about that when you sign up for my free email newsletter which is in uh, on my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. I do a write-up for the month before that gives the theme of the month, uh, themes, keynotes, um, sweet days, challenging days, as well as the actual aspects that make those sweet or challenging with a little bit of explanation as to why and what's happening there. Um, so you can get that for free on my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. Okay, so you might find sweetness on or around January 3rd, January 6th and 7th. January 20th, 23rd, 28th, and 29th. Put a big star around January 29th because, or rather January 28th, because this is the Chinese New Year and the new moon in Aquarius. So if you have to push something through that you could not push through in my suggested time frame that ran until December 3rd, then this might be a date that could work for you because it's dancing right between some challenging aspects, but it has a lot of good energy for forward momentum. Um, so if you have to push something through or do a follow-up for something that you had already started, that could be a date that you could slip in. Really, the end of January and the beginning of February, if you have anything that you're going to have to push through that you didn't do in the window um, through the beginning of December, that's going to be your best time because you're only going to get deeper into the Venus retrograde as you get deeper into February. Um, so it's going to be pretty retrograde -y until May after that. But it will still have effects because it's right in the middle of all this, but it's your best bet if you have to do something. So the dates to um, have extra care or where there might be challenges or drama are January 5th through 12th, the 19th, the 27th through the 29th. And the 31st. Okay, so definitely check out the, my blogs, um, my new moon, making powerful um, wishes for each of the new moons on my website, AnnieHelpsYou.com. You can also check out my courses, my coach certification course, my creating successful online business course, and my astrology apprenticeship program. My astrology apprenticeship program and my creating successful online business courses will be re-enrolling. They have been closed for enrollment. They will be re-enrolling in January, so you can check that out and maybe you'll want to join me um, to do these professional uh, certification courses. So I hope you have a wonderful month and I will see you next month. Bye!